Emma, bring me a teether. Here we go again. Hi everybody, I'm Nasty McRib and welcome back to another episode of The Truth About Being a Dad. And once again, I am joined by my son here. Now, this video actually did a lot better than I thought it would. Um, it may not seem like a substantial amount to you guys, but it got like 100 views in a day. Um, and I thought about doing another video in the other video, but I wasn't fully decided on it, but that kind of helped me decide I want to do another video. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is like the feeling about, you know, being a dad. And honestly, in my opinion, and it could also be your guys's, it is the greatest feeling in the world. There is nothing like it. Absolutely nothing. And that's, I don't know any other way to explain it. Like roller coasters, race cars, it, there's nothing that can compare to having a child. And, you know, that could, that's fellas, ladies, that's everybody. You know, I know people feel differently about certain things, but in my personal opinion, it is the greatest feeling in the world. Nothing can compare. And if you guys feel the same way, hey, go ahead, like, comment, and subscribe. The second thing I want to talk about is, like, people's views on you becoming a parent uh, or a dad. And some of them are negative. Some of them are super happy. Chewing on the table again. It's, it's not chewing on the table. You know, some people might be super happy. You know, they're going to be like, oh, you are you had a kid. You know, I always thought you had like a really fatherly touch to yourself, you know. Um, and, and I always thought you'd be a good dad. But then there are other people who kind of aren't the same way. You know, they might be like, I never expected you to be a dad. You know, I never thought you might be a good parent. Prove them wrong. Um, and then others might be like, you know, kind of the in-between babies. Others might be like the in-between, you know, they're happy ah. and kind of like, wow, really? At the same time. No, no. You don't want it. You know, and it depends on the people who you're talking to, who might be the, the happy-go-lucky people who are like, yeah, you're going to be a great dad. And then you got the people who are going to be downers on it, you know, and then you got the in-betweeners. Now, another thing I want to talk about is how judgmental other parents are. Like, seriously, who are you to tell me what I can and can't do with my child? You know what I mean? Like, me personally, I, I believe in spanking. Um, I was spanked as a kid. I turned out fine mostly. And a lot of other people's 90s and before were spanked as a child. Most of them turned out great. Um, will I do it hard? No, but I'm a firm believer in spanking and some people, some parents frown upon that. And you know, it, it's, it's all choice, personal choice. And you know, parents are judgmental on other things like the style of your kid's hair, the style of his clothes, you know, you feeding your baby with or how you feed your baby at like a restaurant. People look at you funny. You know, it it's it's definitely something different, you know, and people need to understand that this baby right here takes precedence over your thoughts. I, I care less what you think. I know that may seem a little upsetting or selfish, I guess, kind of, but that's just being a parent, you know? You're no longer thinking about just yourselves. So you gotta take this one into consideration, or your kids, you know? You gotta take them into consideration as well as yourself. And I know that can be hard, considering you're so, you, you know, you spent the last 18 to like 24 years flying solo, pretty much, you know what I mean? You know, you had your girlfriends or whatever, so you kinda had to work with them also, so you weren't constantly thinking about just yourself. But when a baby comes into the play field, you know, it's a whole different ball game. You know, you got to actually worry about him. Well, you know, um, is he eating enough or whatever? Uh, is he getting sick? You know, am I cleaning him right? Is he healthy? And other worries that might come into your head dealing with a baby. One thing that could be hard for you guys and um, any father even mothers out there, um, is juggling work uh, while having a family. Um, and, and that is probably, honestly, one of the most difficult things 
and that that honestly could be super hard because you you want to be there with your family but at the same time you have to work to be able to provide for that family and that can be difficult because you want to be there but um in a, a parallel thing you have to work and that's the ironic thing about it is you know maybe when you were growing up if you weren't always the best worker um now because of him or even just having a family you you can't just think about yourself right now you know what i mean you can't be like uh well i really don't need to work right now um you actually have to physically work to provide for your little one and there are government agencies you know and stuff that could help you if you are struggling um you know don't don't be afraid to go ask for help that's another parenting 101 right there don't be afraid to ask for help if you need help with something ask for help that is just rule number 2000, I guess, because honestly, if you need help, just ask. It may be a little embarrassing, and you know, you got those judgmental parents out there or whatever, and the people who view on you now that you're a parent, saying, you know, look at him or her, you know, they need help with their baby. They can't provide for that kid. That is not true at all. You, know, you just need help taking care of that kid. There's nothing embarrassing about it. Yeah, uh, I guess it de depends on the person. But don't be afraid to ask for help. Joey wants his mom. There are other parents out there who are willing to help you and not be judgmental for you asking for help. Seriously, if you need help, just ask. And, you know, like I said before, there are p parents and government agencies out there to help you if you need help. Um, not even just government agency, you know, like churches, they're always willing to help, you know, if you need help, ask, and that could be even with just juggling the work and your family, if you need, like, financial help, there's nothing wrong with that, not everyone is super rich, you know what I mean, so it can be hard to completely provide for that family, and, you know, if those people out there are being like, well, if you can't afford it, why would you have a baby? Babies are expensive, period, you know, unless you're, like, mega rich, or whatever, it, it your money kind of just depletes really fast. So not only now do you have like the electric bill or your house payment, car payment, car insurance, now you have a full blown other human being to take care of. It hurts a little. And I know you guys probably just thought that was a slogan I'd put in, but no, I was, it hurts a little. And you know, so you have to provide that extra bit of food um, you know, his diapers, if he's still a baby, even up until like two, I think they can still technically wear diapers in diapers or pull-ups or whatever. All right. So again, he was getting a little too wiggly. Um, and it's a little hard to get like a full video with him, um, because of that. So back to the, what I was talking about before, don't worry too much on if you cannot, um, if, if you're not rich, you know, you can still have a good life and a good family if you're not super rich. And a lot of people, that's that's one of those things that people frown upon. They're like, again, you know, why why'd you have the baby if you couldn't provide for it? Push those to the side. Those people, just get them out of your lives. Honestly, just, just get those people out of your lives. You don't need that kind of negativity in your life. Another thing I want to point out with um, even being a mother... Um, you know, it's not just necessarily being a father. You will lose friends. Honestly, you will lose friends because they you're you're considered an old person now because because you have a kid. And it's really asinine and stupid that people think that way. But you will lose friends. What you need to do is just get you some other friends with kids. Get you some parent friends. Uh or adult friends as I like to call them. You know, you're you have to grow up a little bit more. Uh, faster when you have a kid because uh, me I'm still kind of a, a child at heart you know I love like kid movies and stuff like that you know I love I love playing with my son you know he, he's, a, he's a bundle of joy and I completely enjoy it get you some like parent friends they'll help out a lot and those guys will have like more information if their kids are a little older or if they have other kids um, you know they'll be able to help you out with uh, trying to figure something out because they're more experienced things you might have done prior to having the child and things you do now 
prior to having the child, you know, you might have been like that wannabe race car driver and, you know, flying down the highway doing like 95. You, you can't do that no more. You have a precious cargo. Um, you know, you have a kid. You, you got to be more responsible. I mean, when, when the kid's not there, I guess you can be a little irresponsible, but be responsible, you know, and you might not have watched, you, you, you probably, uh, you got to change your like movie spectrum. Okay. I absolutely love movies. Almost any kind of movie. I, I like my violent horror movies, slasher films. I, like I said before, I like kiddie movies still, you know, and there's a lot of like adult jokes in kid movies that you don't realize are there when you're a kid, but when you watch them as an adult, you're like, oh, hey. Uh, and, and video games and stuff like that. You know, I don't know what your guys' views on kids playing video games, um, but if my kid wants to play video games, that's cool with me. Uh, I can't be a hypocrite and play video games and not let my kid play video games. But jumping back a few seconds, you, you, you have to change your movie selection if, or even just TV selection. Your child kind of changes things. He, he, uh, I don't want to say terraform, but he terraforms your life because, you know, you can't watch certain shows anymore with that child around. Honestly, from like one to six months, that baby doesn't really fully understand what's going on on the TV. So you can just continue to watch your regular stuff. Um, but once that kid actually starts like being able to speak and um, like pick up on things, that's when you kind of want to switch uh, to the more kid friendly TV shows, movies and stuff like that, because your kid will start learning curse words. Um, and you don't want them to learn about the birds and the bees yet. So just keep that aside. You know, maybe when your kid's asleep, you know, watch watch your movies. And video games, you know, you're going to have to get more kid-friendly video games. Me, I like I like an assortment of games, too. Um, I like, like, horror games. Uh, I'm a big fan of, like, Resident Evils. I like the, the like the Call of Duties, the Battlefield um, collections and stuff like that. But you, you have to get more kid-friendly games because when they grow up a little bit more, they're going to want to play games, and you kind of have to separate, you know, what he can play and what he can't play. You know, and, and they do make ratings on the games so you know, okay, this is good for kids. You know, or if it has a, a rating of an E, uh, which is everyone, and then if it's like uh, M or something like that. And that's what TV shows and movies also. Uh, you got your like PG, G, PG-13, R, the NC-17, which I fully don't completely understand what that actually stands for. Uh, and then you got your TVMA, um, and then you got your unrated uh, which just means it's it's unrated content, but you, you got to watch out for that and make sure that he's not watching stuff that he shouldn't, you know, and people frown upon that, you know, don't let your kid watch like South Park or something because there is some crazy stuff in there. You know, I, I, I myself love South Park, um, but, you know, I don't want my kid watching that. Maybe when he's like 13, 17. Right now they're developing and you don't want them to develop certain things yet because their brain's not going to fully understand what's going on and they're going to get in trouble. And you don't want your kid to get in trouble because if they get in trouble, you get in trouble. Those judgmental parents again are going to be like, oh, shame, shame, you let your kid watch South Park. Uh, but again, you know, it, it all it all varies on who you are as a person and what you don't mind watching or what you don't mind your kid watching. Uh, it's all personal choices. Um, like growing up, I knew parents who let their kids smoke at like 14. That's really stupid, you know, but that I'm not judging. That's their personal choice. Um, was it not the smartest idea? Maybe, but, you know, that's that's their choice. Will my kid be smoking at 14? Not if I have any choice to it. But, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here. I'm running out of time. Um, and I gotta get I gotta get Joey down for a nap. So I'm Nasty McRib, and I will see you guys later.